doing personal development work is very important because in this life we don't have a choice but to grow otherwise we're going to suffer more welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sandy and i help people in their journey to self-mastery for today's video i'm going to share with you a guide on how you can start your own personal development journey part one yes so this video is going to be a two-part series i'm going to upload the part two next week so please watch out for that now, if you're still new to my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification down below because I upload similar content like this. Without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Have you ever wondered whenever we feel stuck in life, it feels so bad, right? It feels so bad because we don't feel like we live up to our fullest potential. And do you know why we experience that way? It's because as human beings, we actually have two parts of us. There's one part of us that wants to stay in the homeostasis, that wants to stay in our comfort zone, that wants to feel safe, that doesn't want to grow. Uh, some people call it our lower self or the ego, but I call it the lazy self. But then there's also part of us that wants to grow, that wants to evolve, that wants to see the fullest potential that we have. And that part of us, some people call it the higher self or our rational self. That's why it feels so bad whenever we feel stuck in life because in every situation, there's always like a tug of war between your higher self and then your lower self. Your higher self wants to pull you up because it wants you to grow but then you have your lower self that is pulling you down so that you remain the same so that you are safe so it feels so bad because we experience resistance within us hence with that in mind can we say that if we remain the same the more that we're going to suffer because we're going to beat ourselves up for it and at the same time, can we say that developing yourself, starting your personal development journey is very crucial because that is the only way we can end suffering. Doing personal development work is very important because in this life, we don't have a choice but to grow. Otherwise, we're going to suffer more. So if you do more personal development, what you're trying to do is you're feeding your higher self. And for me, in my own personal experience, feeding your higher self is the only way that can make us happy. So now that you appreciate the importance of developing yourself, let me now give you my six tips on how you can start your own journey. So my first tip is that developing self-awareness. Now if you develop your self-awareness, it means that you know yourself. And if you know yourself, there's actually three benefits of that. First, you start to become aware of your neurotic behavior. And next, you start to become aware of your limiting or your negative beliefs. And then the last one is that you start to become aware of what you really want out of this life. Let me first start with the first one, which is identifying your neurotic behavior. So before I start discussing that, I want to leave a side note here. When I say neurotic behavior or when I say neurosis, I don't mean psychosis. I don't mean extreme mental illness. I am only referring to mild mental disorder. I am only referring to unconscious or automatic behavior that we do. For example, do you worry so much? So if you do that, I consider that as neurotic behavior and nothing more. So I hope we are clear about that. So let me now give you the list of the neurotic behavior that I know so far. I know there's so much more to it, so please don't limit yourself with the list that I'm going to give you. So let me now start with the list. First is negative thinking. Overthinking worrying perfectionism lying comparing yourself pleasing other people um jealousy and envy sexuality and codependency in the relationship and anxiety and depression so those are the common ones that i know so as you can see these are the things that makes our life miserable and at the same time these are the things that we do unconsciously or automatically so developing self-awareness is important because through awareness from unconscious you become now you become now conscious with that you know where to start you know the root cause of the problem therefore you can now start to improve it because you cannot change something that you do not know 
Now, let me give you an example to fully understand what I'm trying to say here. Let's say for an example, I am a person um, who's always unhappy or sad and I don't even know the reason behind it. I don't even know the reason why I feel this way. I don't even know that it is due to the fact that I am always thinking negative or that I am constantly worrying. So if I do not know the root cause of the problem, I wouldn't know the solution to it. I wouldn't know that the solution to my problem is to be present in the moment. How do you cultivate self-awareness? Um, developing self-awareness is a very deep topic, hence I decided to create a separate video on that. Um, but for the meantime, um, I'm going to give you a journaling prompt. So one of the ways to develop self-awareness is through journaling. So what I did is that I actually uploaded a free worksheet. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Um, you can download it and it's completely free. So in that worksheet, um, I asked you guys to identify all of your neurotic behavior. Now here's the thing. Um, with regards to identifying your neurotic behavior, some of it you are aware of and some of it you will not be aware of. Um, I want you to be open to the fact that you don't totally know yourself. So in the future, as you develop more self-awareness, you become more aware of the mechanisms of this neurotic behavior. So just bear that in mind. Next, so after identifying all your neurotic behavior, the next thing that I want you to do is out of all the list, pick your number one or your top one neurotic behavior. And after identifying that, I want you to focus on that. So the purpose of this video, since this video is about starting your own personal development and developing yourself, um, will not happen overnight, okay? You cannot change yourself everything overnight all right so what we're trying to do here is to know where to focus on is to prioritize so i think starting your personal development the best thing that you can do is to focus on your number one top neurosis after identifying your number one top neurosis i want you to list at least five tangible and specific ways on how you can work on it so let me give you an example so the example that I'm going to give you is something that I personally struggle with and that is um, comparing myself to other people. So I'm going to have to think of five ways on how I can deal about it. So I think number one I can do is to read books about how not to give a fuck. Next thing that I can do is that start to notice when I tend to compare myself more. What kind of thinking patterns do I have? What do I feel? What kind of emotions do I experience? Next is, I, uh, yeah, because it's very important because from unconscious, I become now conscious. Spending less time on social media because as I spend more time on social media, I actually tend to compare myself more because I see perfect lives there and I see myself I'm not. So that actually makes me feel bad about myself. So spending less time on social media helps me. Next thing that I can possibly do is focus on myself. Like, have a life purpose because if you have a life purpose you have a vision or you have a mission um, you will you will be very focused on that so you won't have time to compare yourself spending less time to people who gossip because people that gossip they do it so that they won't feel bad about themselves they do it because they're actually comparing themselves to that person. Cultivating a healthy mindset about human potential, um, cultivating the kind of mindset that we are all unique and that we are all special, so we don't have to constantly compare ourselves. Let's go now to the next benefit. Now, if you know yourself, it means that you know your limiting beliefs. That's the next benefit. Now, let us first talk about what is a belief. A belief is a worldview that we hold as true, but is not necessarily true. Now, there's nothing wrong with having beliefs because beliefs can be empowering. However, beliefs can also be limiting if it is a limiting belief. Alright, so it only becomes a problem when you have a limiting belief. And obviously, we're going to have to eliminate that. Later on, I'm going to teach you how. But how do we acquire these beliefs? Um, we acquired these beliefs when we were a child. Um, as a child, we don't have filters because we are still learning about the world. We learn from observing the world around us. And we are like a sponge. We just absorbs everything. 
hence whatever our parents, our teachers, um, our ate or kuya, um, the society or the adults says or do to us, we believe those things. And we don't question the validity of their opinion because how could we question those things when we don't know any better or when we are still learning about the world. So with that in mind, um, we can say that as we grow up, we actually have accumulated different kinds of beliefs. It could be empowering and it could also be limiting beliefs. Therefore, who you are right now may not necessarily mean a product of your conscious decision. Why is it important that we identify our limiting beliefs? Again, these limiting beliefs are unconscious. We don't even know that we have these kinds of beliefs. So I think it is very crucial that we start to identify those things because through awareness that is when a genuine change can happen. So the next question is, why is it important that we eliminate those limiting beliefs? Again, it's important because um, if you do something that is against your limiting beliefs, you will unconsciously self-sabotage yourself during the process so that that belief will remain true. Again, belief is not necessarily true. However, the mechanisms of our mind is that whatever we believe in, it's going to have to live up to it. Um, let's say for an example, you have this kind of unlimiting beliefs that you don't deserve love. So let me show you the kind of mechanism that will happen when you have that kind of belief. First is that you are going to attract people who won't truly love you. Why? It's not because of the circumstances or it's not because you don't truly deserve love. It's just that you believed in it. And so you unconsciously, again unconsciously, put yourself in a situation wherein people won't love you. And the next thing that will probably happen is that you're going to repel a person's love. It means that you're going to repel people who will truly love you. Um, but let's say for some reason you attracted a person who will truly love you. However, most probably you are going to doubt that love and you start to say to yourself that this person must not truly love me or this person's love must not be true because how could he or she when I don't deserve love in the first place. So with that in mind, you're going to start to self-sabotage your relationship because that kind of relationship does not align with the kind of limiting belief that you have. You believe that you don't deserve love. So when a person's love you, it does not align with that. Hence, you doubt, you doubt their love. Most probably, there are people who truly love you. It's just that you don't believe in them. I know you might be asking, but how can I eliminate my limiting beliefs? Now, eliminating limiting beliefs involve reprogramming your subconscious mind, and I think uh, that deserves a separate video. So again, I'm going to make a separate video on that, so please watch out for that. So for the meantime, I prepared a journaling prompts, which is also included in the worksheet. In that worksheet, I ask you to identify all your limiting beliefs. So please really take the time to think about it. And of course, the worksheet is going to guide you. After identifying it, turn your limiting beliefs into empowering beliefs. So how do we do that? Let's say for an example, uh, let's say for the example we had earlier. Um, you believe that you don't deserve love, so how do you turn that into empowering belief? Instead of saying you don't deserve love, you start saying yourself, I deserve love. I am lovable. Something like that. Next, uh, for ex another example is that if you think that you're not good enough, uh, then, then turn it into empowering belief. Start saying to yourself that you are good enough, that you are more than good enough. Another example, if you think that you are not pretty enough, start affirming yourself that you are beautiful, that you are pretty. Next, now that you have the list of the empowering belief, what I want you to do is affirm yourself or read these empowering beliefs every day, as in every day, especially in the morning. That will actually help you reprogram your mind. Let's go now to the third benefit, which is if you know yourself, therefore, you know what you really want out of this life. Now in this section, I'm going to give you questions that you need to find the answer if you really want to work on yourself. So these questions, um, you cannot 
answer it overnight um it may take you years it may take you decades but it's all fine because it's part of your journey it's part of the process all right just enjoy finding answer into these questions an important question for you to answer is what is your life purpose like why are you here in this world or what is a career that will make you feel so passionate that will make you feel that you're giving contribution or you're providing value or you're making an impact to the world what are your goals like what do you really want right so next is what is your zone of genius now when you say zone of genius what is the thing that only you can do and no other people like what is the special gift that you have or what is the special skill or talent that you have that's why it's called special because only you can do it what are your top five strengths do you even know what are your strengths do you even know what are your gifts find answer to that questions next is what are your top 10 values now this is really important and uh, knowing your value is very important because values these are the things that makes you feel fulfilled and makes you feel happy so if you know your top 10 values and you embody those values within you then you're going to be a happy person and you're going to be a fulfilled person what is your vision like and what is your mission so i think those are the important uh, questions you need to find answer with so again it takes time and please enjoy the journey and i know you have another question but how do I actually know myself, right? So knowing yourself, again, it's a deep topic. It deserves another video. So I'm going to make a separate video on that. So please watch out for that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to get to know yourself. Uh, getting to know yourself, you have to spend more time into your inner room. When I say inner word, I mean your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings your belief system, your world view, how you think, how you see the world, that is how you get to know yourself. So how do you spend more time in your inner world? So you can do these things. First, for me, the best way is through meditation or practicing mindfulness. We'll talk more about that in the future. Next, another thing that you can do is through journaling. So when you pose a question, you're actually thinking, you're going inside. Another thing that you can do is I'm spending time alone so when you spend your time alone you're not disrupted by your external world so you get to spend more time with yourself so spending time with yourself going inward spending time in your inner world I think it's the best way to get to know yourself let's go now to the next step my next step in how to start your personal development journey is actually using Maslow's hierarchy of needs but first of all what is Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, Maslow's actually proposed that human needs is arranged into hierarchy you need to be able to um, meet your basic needs first before you can go up into the pyramid so as human evolve their needs also evolved our first need is physiological needs so this is the need that you need to meet first before you go up to the next need so physiological needs uh, it is a basic need you need this to survive for example breathing water food sex or house so you need to be able to meet this need first before you can move up to the next need which is safety needs now what do we mean by safety needs safety needs uh, means to secure your survival for example employment money health properties next need is love and belongingness this is a need that makes us feel accepted and loved by the society so for example romantic relationship friends family so next above that is self-esteem need self-esteem is the desire to feel good about ourselves for example achievement respect confidence self-assertiveness and then the last one is self-actualization now let me ask you a question do you believe that self-actualization is a need yes it's a need so if we can go back to the first thing that i said in the video i said to you that as a human being there's actually two parts of you the higher self and then the lower self so as you evolve as you go up in the muscles hierarchy of needs 
and you start self-actualizing what we're what you're actually meeting is the need of your higher self so that is what we want in this video it is a human need to continuously improve and see its full potential that's why when you are in a job when you don't feel like you're growing you're willing to leave that job you know why because it doesn't meet your self-actualization needs uh, example of self-actualization need is self-discovery self-mastery and um, creativity spontaneity life purpose and self-awareness so that model is important because that will help us identify where we should be focusing on because again this video is how to start your own personal development so again we're trying to prioritize we're trying to know where we should be focusing on so the model the Maslow's hierarchy of needs will help you on that uh, let's say for an example um, you don't have a job and you can't even pay your rent you can't even pay your bills so instead of thinking or instead of worrying how can you help other people you have to worry how can you help yourself first so instead of finding your life purpose or instead of finding how you can contribute to the community your priority is finding first a job before anything else so we were able to know that following the Maslow's hierarchy of needs so what can we do so first it's also included in the worksheet um, I want you to identify where you lock in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs so identify all of those things and from there pick your top one need that you should be able to meet right now how do you know your top one what will guide you again the model will guide you use the model however I wanted to leave a note here um, this is not a hard rule all right um, you can be flexible with and do what works best for you so and the only person that can help you know what's best for you is no other than by yourself I think that's it for the part one I was only able to give you the two tips um, I will be uploading the part two next week I'm gonna give the other four tips so please watch out for that by the way let me know if you have any questions leave your questions in the comment down below and I also encourage you to comment or share your uh, journey or, or share your journey on how you start your own personal development or you can also share your tip in the comments down below I really enjoy uh, reading your comments and I also wanted to learn from you so you learn from me and at the same time I get to learn from you as well so that's pretty much it um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope that you learned something from it and if you did don't forget to subscribe like the video share it to your friends follow me in my journey to self-mastery bye